What's up, YouTube? This is uh, Hoover29, a.k.a. Gunpowder Residue. Check me out on Twitter. Um, as you can see, I got a brand new box here. Inside is a um, pistol I've been waiting on for a long time. Um, for you guys that probably don't want the backstory, you can probably just fast forward to the review or just open box review. It's not really a review of the gun, but more or less just the open box or whatnot. But anyway... I was at Walmart a few years ago and I uh, ran across about a thousand rounds of uh, uh, 22 long rifle. So I figured, okay, I'll probably just put it on gun broker or something like that, you know, sell it, make a little cash. But, um, you know, I ended up getting a little attached to it. I said, you know what? I think I'll probably just go try to find me a little 22 plinker, you know, to try to get my pistol accuracy a little better, you know, get my posture and everything right on pistol so I can, you know, be a little bit more accurate on my pistol game. And, uh, Start, you know, researching 22 pistols or whatnot and narrowed it down to two pistols. And it was between the um, the Mosquito and the uh, SR-22. And I guess you guys can obviously see which one I chose. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get right to the open box. And uh, for well, before we do that, I want to give a shout out to uh, Hickok45. I think that's his name. Sorry if I botched that. Or botched that. But, um. Uh, Give a shout out to him if um, you guys are interested in this gun. He has a really good review on his uh, page of the um, Ruger SR-22. And, um, he, you know, he has a good little range set up in his backyard or whatnot. And he does a good review of that. So if you guys want to check him out, go over to his channel, Hickok45. I don't know how you spell that. I may put a post in at the end of the video or something like that. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, thanks to him for doing that because it's really it really convinced me on yeah, um, choosing this gun over the uh, mosquito. Uh, when you first get it, of course, it'll come in a nice Ruger box like this. And of course, you don't pay attention to that for too long because you just want to open the thing up, right? Comes in nice little plastic here. Let's unveil this real quick and show it briefly, and we can get to the contents in the gun. Uh, this way it look like looks like here. Um, Pretty nice size gun. I wanted something more full size. I didn't want like a little small gun. I want something to replicate somewhat of a standard gun size um, so I can, you know, um, put the same feel towards the uh, full size pistol when I finally get it. But this is um, pretty much the uh, 22 line of uh, Ruger's uh, SR-22, if that even made sense. I have no idea. Um, take this little safety out right here. Uh, just, just, just comes in here to, I guess, ensure that the gun has it doesn't have anything in the barrel. But it's a pretty lightweight gun. It has a um, rubber kind of molding on the bottom here. Um, ten round magazine. Nice uh, adjustable sights that you can sight up and down, and left and right. Right there. Well, I know definitely no left and right. I'm sure up and down also. Um, got your rack button here. Got your safety. Safety on, safety off. Um, comes with a hammer there. That's one thing I'm going to use to. I never had a pistol with a hammer. So I, I kind of like that feature in there. It should be pretty useful, I guess. Or just something to get used to. But overall, it's a pretty nice gun. Nice finish. Nice grip. Feels good in my hand. Um, it's not too small. Um, so I not hadn't shot it yet, of course, so just kind of waiting to get that done. And of course, guys, the gun is empty. Sorry, I'm kind of wobbling this thing around everywhere. I'll get it back in the picture soon. Um, and of course, um, you have here, you have an extra, extra grip and, um, it's not really rubber. It seems like a plastic grip. So I guess they gave you the, um, the decision to decide if you like a rubber grip or a plastic grip. The gun comes with a rubber grip already on there, but you can kind of hear this thing here is kind of, kind of plastic. So I don't know if I put that on, but who knows? I may not like the rubber grip one day and decide to put it on. And of course, it you know is a, pretty much a replica of like the Ruger grip that comes on there, except for it's just plastic. Um, you get two uh, magazine bumpers or magazine butt plates. Um, these are plastic as well. Um, these are just, I guess, for replaceable. Maybe if you lose one, you know, or one breaks or chips or whatever, or maybe you get a multiple magazine, another magazine, you may want to put these on there. So that was pretty cool. 
come with uh, two magazines that already, you know, have the uh, butt plates on there. The one that is primary for the gun comes with an extra little extension there. So when you have the gun, you know, when you put the magazine in the gun, one thing I like about it is that you have an extra grip there. So if it comes down to your, you know, pinky there, you know, it's not like you're letting that pinky slide over the gun. It has a little, uh, little raised lever there, little raised ledge, so you can um, get a get a good grip and um, have it a good feeling in your hand. And so that's one thing I really liked about it. This gun has some cool uh, safety features about it too. I'll try to show you real quick. Um, like again, I hadn't used a gun uh, too far. So I just try to do the best I can. Um, when the gun is on safety, the trigger pretty much goes limp. Like there is nothing you really you can do if the gun is on safety um, with the trigger. So that's kind of cool. We'll take a little bit of getting used to. You know, if you're trying to dry fire or whatnot, um, that'll take a good while to get used to. The only way that I found out you can dry fire is when you have a uh, magazine in there. And of course, um, of course, it has to be off safety. And when you take it off, the trigger engages. And you can see the hammer slide back. And of course, there is a little weight tension on there, on the trigger. And it allows you to dry fire. And without the magazine, uh, you can't dry fire at all. Again, there goes the trigger, goes limp. Uh, another thing I'm going to ha have to get used to uh, with this gun um, is the safety decock. Now here, and I don't know how many other you know nice handguns have the same feature, but with this gun, if you want to decock the safety, instead of you know like typical guns, you would kind of put your finger on the trigger, and then you would have your thumb on the decock or on the trigger on the hammer for the decock then you would you know let it ride down slowly well with this gun you simply if the if the hammer's already caught while you're still in safety all you have to do is put your and it's ambidextrous by the way ambidextrous safeties by the way all you have to do is take it off safety and the hammer will decock itself which seems scary at first i hadn't tried it yet but i'm sure i will but just pretty much take off the safety like this and the hammer decocks and you can see the trigger you know goes back to the firing position as well so that's pretty cool um i'm gonna have to get used to that and um you know just try it out and see what the deal is with that but that's pretty cool quick little feature again two magazines 10 round magazines here um again 10 round magazines what, what more can you say about that uh let's see here we got instruction manual uh, Ruger, blah blah blah. You probably need to need read this to learn how to field strip it, take it apart. We got some other Ruger stuff here. Looks like uh, something about a pistol. Got a Ruger sticker here. Don't know where I'm gonna put that. If I decide to put it anywhere, may just stay in the box. Um, but yeah, that's just the ins and outs. I guess I still need to register the gun and, and all that good stuff. In here, well, let me do something. Let me cover up all my good stuff. I got my serial number and all that stuff covered up. But this basically is a package, and I never, I never received this with any of my firearms before. But this basically is a package that has uh, one spent round, um, a test fire, if you will, from the uh, manufacturer, from the company, to ensure that the gun runs safely. At first, I didn't know what it was because I never received one of these for one of my guns before. But I guess that's the thing that Ruger does, and maybe. Um, some other, you know, reputable manufacturers that they do to ensure that the gun work is the gun is working properly before it leaves the factory. But in here, right here, you know, it's not much plainer. It's not gonna move around too much. But right here is a spent 22 casing um, that they, you know, ship with the gun to ensure that the gun is firing um, flawlessly once it leaves the factory. So that's pretty cool. Once again, it has, you know, the, all the titles and you know different things that about the gun you want to know pretty much. Um, again, another cool feature that I guess comes with quality when you buy a gun of this caliber. This is my first uh, real caliber, well, a real high quality caliber gun. Well, I shouldn't say caliber, but uh, my first gun was a, my first handgun rather was a Taurus. Um, I think it's a PT, PT 24 Pro, a 24 Pro or whatever. 
it didn't come with anything like that. Not that that was the deal breaker or anything, but you know what I'm saying? Like when you see stuff like that in the gun, it, you know, it kind of says, okay, well, these guys, you know, want their quality to be known and want to stand behind it. Um, and another thing that didn't come with my Taurus is a uh, case, a little case you can uh, put the gun inside. I don't know if I ever use this, but I mean, it helps. I mean, kind of says, hey, you know, this is something you can put your gun in. Something, anything you get inside a gun case or inside inside of, um, uh, the packaging with the gun is good. I don't care if you use it or not. Like, I'll probably never use these, you know? I mean, if I have to, I will, but... I mean, it just makes it a little a little bit better to have to say, hey, they gave me an extra butt plate for my magazine. You know, hey, they gave me an ex uh, gave me a, a case to put my gun in. You know, um, things like that really count, you know, in my opinion, when I'm buying a gun and stuff. Because I have an FN scar. Well, you guys seen some of my videos, but my FN scar, it does not come with a gun case at all. It doesn't have anything. You just get the scar and a cardboard box, and that's it. Nothing else. All right. Um, so that's a little something about that I kind of appreciated once I've seen all this stuff. And of course, you have your traditional gun lock here. This was a lot bigger than what I was expecting, but I get the you know I get the concept. Basically, when you unhook the lock, you put the part that swings out. You put it down. You rack the gun first, of course. You put it down the um, the um, magazine well. Um, it goes from the top of the well from the slide down to the magazine well and at the bottom of the gun you can lock it this will come out the bottom of the gun uh, bottom out that bottom of the handle and you pretty much lock the gun that way and you know you keep it safe for kids or whatever and all that stuff you want to keep it in a safe place so that's pretty cool as well nice little safety feature um again uh pretty lightweight gun i don't have the um, actual weight of the gun but I can't wait to get out and shoot. I'm going to try to go shoot this today. But first, I have to clean it up. I always clean up my guns, regardless of, you know, where they come from, or new or used. I always clean it up anyways, and you guys should too. Um, so if I get that done in a reasonable time, um, I should go get that out today and uh, maybe have some range video. If not, I definitely have some soon, um, just a few rounds or whatever I decide to do with it. A little plinking here. Um, that's really it so much far. If you guys got any more questions... Um, about this gun or want me to do something special with it before I get out to do it um, just let me know and um, I'll definitely try to do that for you get that out for you but I'm definitely anticipating this gun um, shooting well and firing accurately um, this gun cost me um, $2.99 I got it from a local uh, gun shop here around town um, kind of funny story about that um, uh, my decision on buying a gun, or rather, not decision on buying a gun, but a funny story about actual how I came upon the gun. I got it from a gun shop here in town that jacked up their prices after the Newtown shooting, after the uh, Connecticut, you know, by Adam Lanza fiasco, all that crap. Um, this was a gun shop, you know, I get most of my guns, get most of my ammo from, go to the range, and I stayed loyal to them, but. And I'm, and I'm aware everybody jacked up their prices. I get it. You know, everybody's trying to make a profit. I mean, even the gun shows here um, in my city, um, it was the biggest gun shows ever I've ever seen. You know, after Newtown, everybody had jacked up prices and the lines were long as crap. You know, I never stood in line to get into a gun show until, you know, after that shooting. Anyhow, I vowed to myself and said, you know what? I'm never going to go to them again. I'm never going to go there because they jacked up their prices so much. And I think they should have been loyal to the customers. That's just my feeling. If you guys, I, I get the point of capitalism. I get it. I get the um, thing of supply and demand. I get it. But if you have loyal customers that's been coming to your store for years, why jack up the prices? You know what I mean? Why I say, okay, well, you guys have been coming here for years. We're still going to try to compete with the rest of America and or whoever else and jack up these prices because the rest of America is doing it. No, screw that. You know what I'm saying? Like, be loyal to the people who's been loyal to you for all the years. Don't jack up your prices just because of um, threatened threats of taking guns away. You know what I mean? Be reliable and dependable to the people that's been reliable and dependable to you for so many years. Okay, off that soapbox. Anyway, here's the story. Um, I was going to get this gun online because I've seen a, uh, quite a few uh, lower prices online. Um and i just looked at the math and said hey you know what i can get this gun a lot cheaper online except for 
the shipping fees and except for the FFL fees. I don't know anybody who has an FFL license where I can get it free. So that would have been roughly another 35, maybe 25 bucks um, for me to get it shipped through FFL plus shipping and handling. Um, I go to a website and I'm just throwing out all these places I'm here. I'm not getting any any uh, funding from them. But um, I go to a place um, online. It's called slickguns.com. Uh, S-L-I-C-K. Uh, G-U-N-S dot com um, and it's basically and you guys may know of it if not you can go check it out um, it's basically a um, um, pretty much a database it compiles all the good deals it's like a coupon you know retail me not dot com stuff like that you just type in um, different guns different ammo whatever and it basically gives you the best uh, deals and the best coupons that's on the internet at that moment um, it's pretty cool um, you can find some really good prices on there um, I got a few things else. I got a few other things I'm going to buy on that website. <clears throat> um, well, from there, it's not a website that has it. It just links you to the places where, you know, you can get the good deals from. But um, I got a few little optics and things I've located on there and tried I'm going to buy. Well, I want to buy before the um, before they expire and all that stuff. Uh, so, like I said, I went I went through there, you know, found some good deals and said, you know what, I can come out cheaper if I just go to a local gun shop and find it. Um, I called the place. I said, hey, you guys got the Ruger SR-22 in. They said, yeah, we have it. I said, how much? They said two ninety nine because, oh, here's another thing. I know I'm just going everywhere with this, but I didn't see the reason in paying over, over $300 for a 22. I still don't get it, even though I got it anyway. This cost me two ninety nine, but... It just, it just, it, to me, paying over three hundred dollars for a twenty-two is just, I don't know, three twenty-two shouldn't cost over two fifty in my opinion. I don't care what the quality is, you know what I mean? Like, why are you paying three hundred dollars for a twenty-two? Like, I just don't get that. You know, like forty or maybe eighty more bucks, you know, you can get like a forty caliber or nine millimeter. You know, like I just don't get that, man. It kind of gets to me. But anyway, I called the first gun shop. I'm like, hey, you got the gun. You know, they're like, yeah, we carry it. I'm like, how much is it? They're like $2.99. Or I'm like, all right, great, sweet. So I go Saturday to go pick it up. And I'm like, hey, I'm came to pick up the uh, Ruger SR-22. The guy looks in the cabinet, says, oh, we don't have any more. We hadn't had any for a while. I'm like, really? Seriously? Like, I just called you, like, yesterday and said, you know, do you guys carry the gun? And he was apparently just thought that's what I meant, you know, Kim carrying a gun. Usually when you call someone asking them to carry the gun, usually we'll let them know, say, hey, yeah, we carry it, but we don't have any stock. And or we carry it, and we have, you know, however many come on by. Sorry, brother, that's my text mail. You can obviously hear I like guns a lot. Um, you know, come on by, you know, come get it. But I went there, and the guys completely didn't have anything regarding Aruga SR-22 even in stock. And then I asked the guy, hey, how much you would sell it for if you if you guys had it? What's your guys' price? He's like, oh, 363. I'm like, okay, you guys are obviously on some kind of different story because this is not like anything I've been hearing um, on the phone. So I was kind of bummed about that because they didn't have the gun. So I decided to check it, um, another place that was in town. I went there, but they had the chrome version of um, this gun. It's basically where the top rack, top slide, rather, um, it's pretty much chrome or like a brushed aluminum or whatever it is. Pretty nice gun. It looks it looks pretty cool. And they wanted three fifty for it. And again, I'm not even cool with even paying over three hundred dollars for a twenty two, but I knew I wasn't gonna buy that. Um, like I said, the gun looked nice though, but they just didn't have this version in. So I called another place in town and they had it for three seventy. Anyway, you see where this is going. So then that's when I went to I said, you know what, I got a few things to do on my side of town. I just go to the gun shop on my side of town and you know, see what they price for. This is a gun shop that I vowed to never go to after the Newtown shooting if they jacked up the prices. So I went in there for like the first time ever since like Newtown or whatever or before Newtown or whenever. And lo and behold, you know, I just go in there just for the fun of it. Lo and behold, they had it for twenty uh two ninety nine. So I'm like, crap, man. You know, might as well go check it out. You know, get it. You know, two ninety nine I can't find anywhere else. And like I said, I'll probably come out paying a little more if I bought it online. And um, so long story short, I know you guys, if you guys are still watching this, thank you. I guess you were the loyal listeners or loyal subscribers or whatever. I appreciate that. Speaking of my subscribers, um, uh, 
I'm just everywhere. So anyway, that's that's the story. That's the freaking story. I know you waited 20 minutes just to hear it, but yeah, that's the story how I came across this guy. Anyway, as far as my subscribers go, I want to give a shout out to a couple people that joined me. If I don't call your name, I'm sorry. YouTube wouldn't let me go back and retrieve all my people who subscribe, and I don't know how to even look at the people who subscribe. Um, so I got some stuff on my uh, Google Mail, Gmail. Um, from people who subscribe, I just saved them in there because I knew when I made my next video, I'll probably just give them a shout out. Anyway, uh, Fort Peck 275, thank you. A Goody 100, thanks, bro. Kevin Coy or Kevin Coho, thanks, bro. Uh, STL Tony, Chris Marks, Fatality, Mark Salisbury, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, KO someone, actually, it's KOX someone or KO, I'm, I know what you mean, bro. KO someone. Thanks for the sub, man. Thanks for the sub. John Doe, thanks for the sub. Mr. Poncho467, thanks for the sub, bro. Um, those are the only ones I could look at or the recent subs that I got. Um, for some reason, again, they won't let me do it on YouTube. But anyway, um, thanks for the subs, guys. Um, I'm going to try to keep a few little videos coming. I don't post every day. I know I need to get back to posting. Um, but sometimes I just, you know, get a little busy and sometimes honestly, I don't have stuff to post. I guess the more stuff I get, the more stuff I can post. So now that I got a new gun, obviously I'm going to post more videos. If you guys have any videos you want to see, if you guys got something you want me to do with the gun or try to test something with the gun that I have, um, let me know. I think you guys know my inventory. If not, you can just watch some of my videos and see some of the guns that I have. So this is definitely the new gun to the family. And hopefully I can make some videos for it. And again, just thank you guys for subs. And thank you guys for liking this, this video. Um, thanks for doing what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, subscribe, do what you got to do. You know how to get done. You know what I mean? So, again, thanks. And um, like, subscribe to this video. Like I said, 18,000 times. I guess I'll just stop the video right now. All right, guys. Talk to you later. See you.